Rotten ground, Cherokee 55302 at the coast of the ramp with Zulu request VFR departure to the north. Cherokee 55302, Rotten ground, good morning, runway 5, taxi via Charlie, cross runway 33. Runway 5, taxi via Charlie, cross 33, Cherokee 302. Okay, you did that. Yep, I heard that bleeding a little bit. <laughs> All right. Looks like the wind's coming this way, right? So we'll dive away. Dive yep. away. There you go. A lot of people think of wind correction like whatever angle that the wind is coming through the windshield, that's where you point the ailerons, right? So if it's going this way, you point it this way. If it's coming this way, you still point them this way. Okay. If that makes sense. And we're cleared to cross 3-3. But we'll still be checking. Clear left. Clear right. If it's ever hard to conceptualize, like, oh, why am I doing this, right? We can see the wind. Well, it's coming this way, right, because the wind sock. If we look at that aileron on the left, that aileron's angled down so that the wind doesn't get under it and then pull that wing up. Okay. Yeah, it's weird transitioning when you go from, like when we pulled out, we were into the wind. Yeah. And then when you transition over, you almost go opposite deflection. Yeah. Right? Because like you're diving, diving into, or diving away and climbing into. Yeah, it, it's weird. Like, because like when we, when we roll out on the runway here, we're going to have pretty much the same. Where, where do I do the run up here? Just so you, you can point towards the vehicle roadway sign. Okay. And then we, you can just go straight, straight at it. And then as you get closer to the edge of the taxiway, then you can swing it around. Okay. That's good. And yeah, perfect. Okay. But yeah, as you can see, right, as we take off, we're going to have to have the, the same wind correction as we had when we're taxiing, just no elevator down, right? Yeah. Elevator neutral when we're with the headwind. Okay. <coughs> Great. Suction 4.8, 5.2. Looks like 5.2. Oh. Okay. And idle power check. All right. Do you know what, um, <coughs> if it was above 5.2, do you know what that would yeah, signify? basically, yeah, there's a there's a relief valve in there so that it doesn't get, like, too high. And basically what that would mean is the relief valve is no good. Okay. And then the gyros could be spinning too fast. And then that wouldn't make them not work. It would just be, it would just shorten the life of the gyros. Okay. Are you going to do this takeoff? Yes. Okay. You still want me to call him? Yep. You can go ahead and call him. Um, what heading are you going to turn to on the way to uh, Wyndham? Um, I was going to turn just due north. Okay. That works fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to have you navigate via sectional slash memory. So. Okay. Let me just... Uh, do one thing real quick. Sure. K-I-G-D. As if I didn't know where we were going. Done. All right. Out. I checked there's course. no notums at Wyndham, so that's good. Okay. Magnetic course 359. Seems pretty yep. good, and the wind's just blowing straight north, so... Or okay. Roughly. Okay. So, um, I'll give him a call. Okay. Groton Tower, Cherokee 55302, holding short of runway 5, ready for departure. Cherokee 55302, roger, uh, what's your direction of flight? North. Cherokee 302, left turn approved, wind is 090 at 16, gusting to 27, runway 5, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 5, left turn to the north approved, Cherokee 302. Okay. Alright, 1, 2. Let's take the two seven. All right.
Okay, so coming over here, right, using all the runway as we usually do. Okay. Clear right, clear left, no one's on the runway, runway's ours. Okay, we'll swing around. Okay, a lot of this sort of crosswind correction. Okay. Okay, two notches of flaps. I'm gonna go like that just because I don't have toe brakes to hold it down. Okay. Three greens, steady RPM, and release. Okay, airspeed's alive. As I speed up, I'll roll this level slowly. 40, 50, 5, rotate. Okay, climbing out at 70. Okay, positive rate. I'm clear my 50 foot obstacle. One notch out, nice and slow, still accelerating, second notch out, and 80 knots, we'll watch out for that bird. Okay. All right. Your controls. My controls. Your controls. So trying to stay coordinated visually on takeoff when there's a strong crosswind is always difficult, yeah. right? Because when we take off, the plane wants to crab into the wind, which you're actually supposed to let it, right? Yeah. Because if, if you try if you try to like correct the rudder, swing it this way, that's going to be uncoordinated, right? So you really have to rely on the ball to stay coordinated in a crosswind takeoff. Okay. And I'm thinking 2,000 feet will be a good altitude to head over to Wyndham. Okay, 2,000, sure. Yeah, if, if we uh, if we get up to 2,000 and then we realize we can get higher, we can do that. Okay. So yeah, this ADA said the cloud deck's at like 4,900, so we should be fine to go a little higher, but if 2,000 is fine, then we'll do 2,000. Okay. Yeah, I'll go 2,500. Okay. Oh, that's kind of interesting. The winds aloft go 27, 21, 23, 23, 13 at 15,000 feet. Jeez. That's weird. And then 18 at 18,000 feet, and then it climbs up after that. Maybe I go to 15,000 then. <laughs> Pitch, power, trim, fuel pump off. Should have done that at 1,000, and we're okay with Rich because we're below 3,000. So technically, um, standards on the check ride, even for the normal landing, yep. is plus 500 minus zero. So it's very unlikely he's going to make you pick a point for the normal landing. Okay. okay. As long as you land within a reasonable distance, regardless, almost every landing. From here on out, it's going to be like, all right, try to hit that point, you know? Okay. So, plus 500 minus zero translates to do not land before the point at all, right? Because if you land before, there's no gray area where he can be like, eh, you know, that's pretty close, you know? If you land before it, it's just like, you know, you're, you're making the decision for him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that plus 500 is for normal landing. A normal landing, yeah. Plus 200 for short field. Yes, that's okay. right. If you're flying in steady winds um, and at some angle to the wind, are there any control surface inputs needed to stay A, coordinated, and B, like on the course that you're on? Um, not significantly. Okay. I mean, all that's really required is, oh, the wind's coming this way, I have to go this way. 
And yeah. it's, it's just, but once it, you're lined up on it, yeah. it's basically... Yeah. Okay. So we're like 10 miles from Wyndham right now. Okay. You can switch over. And I'll give him a call. What's our plan right now? Um, so... I uh, should have planned this out a little bit more. So, uh, winds were... Winds at Groton at least. Oh, I, I'll give... I'll call it... Or there check, we go. Let's check okay. ASOS first. Yeah. Throw it on test. 5,500. Overcast, 8,500. Temperature, 10 Celsius. Dew point, 0, 04 Celsius. Altimeter, 3006. Zero, zero, Remarks, density altitude, minus 400. Traffic. Windham Airport, Willimantic, Connecticut. Automated weather observation, 1257 Zulu. Wind, 070 zero, zero, at zero, 06. Visibility nice. one zero seven zero zero six zero seven zero. So we'll plan to land runway nine, which would mean we would overfly the field at one thousand eight hundred. Join the left downwind for runway nine. All right. Okay, I got comp two off. Good. One two two nine seven five. So the wind has kind of been pushing us. To the left. This way the whole time. Yep. And so you've been holding your course pretty good. Oh, we've been like pushed. Three five nine, but yes. So you see this thing here? Yeah. Zero three seven. Zero three seven. Is that magnetic or true? Magnetic. Okay. I mean, that can't be it, can it? I guess. Why not? I don't know. I feel like it's too close. But, uh, yeah, you're right. That's all well romantic there. So you're right. Okay. So, okay, so I could, can I do a right base or should I not? No, yeah. Left traffic is standard. Um, okay. And there's another plane in the pattern. The nine at window. Yeah, so there's, there's another plane in the pattern, so it wouldn't be very smart to do it just a straight in. Okay. Um, so straight in is okay, but only when you're not interfering with any other planes in the pattern. Okay. So we'll overfly the field. Okay. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 55302, five miles southwest inbound, overflying the field at 1,800 for entry into the left downwind for runway nine, uh, Wyndham. All right, nice call. It would have been better if it was like 10 miles out. Yeah. All right, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, ideally, we'd make a 10 mile call, then a five mile call, yep. then a, hey, I'm like right here call, and then I'm actually where I said I'm gonna be call. Okay. Okay, and I'll do my checklist, descent, mixture rich, fuel pump on, fuel tank fullest, lights on. Okay, we're good. I can switch over tanks. Too. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, and 1,800. All right, there's traffic on the runway. See them. Yep. Oh, a little bit of precip. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, two miles southwest, overflying the field at 1,800 for teardrop entry into the left downwind, runway nine, Wyndham. 
All right, so I'll do a short field landing here, okay. and then we'll do it to a full stop, and then you can do a short field takeoff. Okay. And then stay in the pattern, short field landing. All right. Point of traffic, Charlie Bill's going to be departing on nine with the pole. Yeah, I see him. He didn't really see where he was going. Yeah, no. But yeah, now although we're doing a little bit of like real life flying, you'll see you see how inconvenient it is when people aren't specific. Yeah. Which is why it's important for you to be specific. Hey, I'll I'll stay up a little bit, give him some space. Yep, I see him. And traffic over find the field has the traffic on base in sight. On crosswind, rather. Yeah, so I'm going to be turning downwind to nine. I want to be my last one, so I'm sneaking behind me. Thank you. Okay. Right. And pattern altitude 1,300. If you turn now, you're not really going to have a lot of room if, if you see the runway there. So. Yeah, I was just swinging it. I'm going to turn the other way. Gotcha. All right. He's no factor or should be no factor. I lost him. He's uh he's way out there. Uh, Maybe okay. uh, eleven o'clock. Okay. Now. Oh oh. Twelve o'clock. Yep. I thought he said he was. Nine and full stop. Okay. Pretty far out. It seems like. Hey, he's in a. That's normal. Relatively normal spot. Yep. Okay. So I'll get back up to one thousand three hundred. Alright, as soon as you make that downward call, I'll take the controls. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, left downwind midfield at runway 9. Windham. Hey, my controls. Your controls. My controls. Alright, so, my point is going to be the second center line stripe. Okay. Alright, so you got the threshold markers, then you got the number. Then you got the first center line stripe, and then the second center line stripe. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go for the beginning of the uh, second center line stripe. Okay. Okay, we'll go one notch flaps here. He's on short final, so he's no factor. And we're turn base here. So here... In the pattern, obviously, we always want to be precise, but even more so when we're doing a precision landing like this. Okay. Okay, second notch. That'll help me slow down a little bit. Actually, been a little while since I've demonstrated one of these things, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay. <laughs> I can coach people through it. <laughs> see if I can do it myself. All right, setting up for that steeper than normal approach. Window traffic, Cherokee five five three zero two, turning final runway nine, full stop window. Okay, full flaps right here. We'll start to slow down to 65. Okay. Looking at the windsock, maybe dealing with a little bit of a left crosswind. Not much, though. Bring out a little more power. Over the airspeed tolerance, you have plus 10, minus 5 from the approach speed that you pick. Okay.
Add a little bit of power to arrest my, des my descent rate. A little more power. And we'll kind of go power idle here. And we'll hold it off and boom, right on it. Brakes back pressure, flaps to the floor. Oh, you got it. And we're stopped by the thousand footers. All right. All right, all right, I still got it. All right, cool. <laughs> You can see, like, once you touch down kind of firmly like that, you have not much energy to lose in terms of the braking stuff. Right. So as we taxi by, you'll be able to see how kind of shortly we stopped, right? We would have been able to stop by, like, the middle of, of the thousand footers yeah. if I, like, came to, like, a complete stop, you know what I mean? Okay. All right, you can do the after landing checklist. All right. Um, <clears throat> so when we stop, flaps up, lights is required. Fuel pump off, trim set. But if we look on here, we'll get rid of the aeronautical. We can measure this, right? So the second center line stripe to the middle of the thousand footers, that's like 600 feet. Wow. Right? So pretty decent. Yeah. Right? With like, you're, you're coming in slow, then you flare, you bleed off even more of the speed. Then you land, and by that time, you're only going like, you know, maybe like 60 miles an hour, like 50 knots, right? And then you're like, okay, brrr, right? Yep. Uh, these brakes are not nearly as good as a car's brakes, but it's kind of similar to like a car's stopping distance going like 60 miles an hour, right? Yeah. Sort of, right? All right, we can go. Okay. That windsock almost, it's just kind of dead, I guess. I was yeah. going to say, it almost favors uh, the other side, 2-7. This one? Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, for a second, yeah, I, I, I thought you were going to say, like, maybe it's favoring 3-6 because it was, like, angling that way a little bit. Yeah. But, like, yeah. <laughs> I was seeing it opposite. Yeah. So, like, you know, landed at, like, that light over there and then stopped by the thousand footers. So that's what short field give you when you're not trying to like grease it in like, you know, super, super nicely. Right. Have you ever taken off nine? Yes, so okay. we taxi on to yes. 3618. Yep. Exactly. I forgot to say my clear the runway call. I also forgot to say my base call. That was not good. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Before takeoff, flap set. Door check. Close. Close. Also, flap set. Two notches of flaps. Oh, okay. For short field. All right. And... For, for short field... I don't start with it no. fully back. That's soft. That's soft. Yep. Okay. Yep. Lights is required. Good. Fuel pump on. Transpire 1200. And radios set. Takeoff brief. We'll be doing a short field takeoff. Um, if we're not up by uh, halfway down the runway, I will abort the takeoff. If we are up and below 1,000 feet, land straight ahead. If we are up and above 1,000 feet, I will turn back and land on the runway. Okay. Um, and we will stay in the pattern and then do a short, short field, field landing. landing. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 55302, taxiing via runway 36 for departure, runway 9, close traffic, Wyndham. Is that a good call? 
Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. That was good. Um, if we're doing a real short field, then we would back taxi on the uh, on the threshold here. Okay. And you know what? Why don't we do that just for the sake of okay. doing it? A little tiny back taxi like this doesn't require a, oh, we're back taxi on, on runway 9 call. Okay. But if it was like a significant back taxi, like at Block Island, then it would require a back taxi call. Okay. Don't clip that light. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so no brakes in, no crosswind. Okay, engine instruments green, built RPM, and go. Okay, airspeed's coming alive, looking for 55 knots. Yep. Okay, rotate. Build to 70, climbing out at 70, and I'm, I already cleared my obstacle. Yep. Okay, so I'll drop it down. Man, that was fast to clear the obstacle. Yep. All right. Out at 80 and looking for 1000. All right, yeah, that was good. Thanks. Um, I gave it a little bit rather than coming down to 80, I gave it a little more back pressure and like dropped the uh, speed a little bit more. Is that would that be a problem? Uh, for like, like, like just for a second, like when, when you're retracting the flaps. Um, right before I did that, like right after I cleared the 50 foot obstacle, I noticed I was like even slower than 70. Oh, oh, so as long as you stay plus 10, minus 5, as long as you stay in that range, then you're fine. Okay. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, turning left crosswind, runway 9, Windham. And that plus 10, minus 5 is there to allow, you know, deviations for like weird air, like turbulence. Okay. Uh, stuff like that. Like you probably saw when I was climbing out of my short field, I got to like, like after I retracted my flaps, I accelerated to like 90, right? Which that wasn't intentional. That was just me paying attention to staying on runway heading. And then I look and I'm like, oh, I'm at 90. And then I just fix it, right? Yeah. But that's within standard. Okay. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, left downwind runway nine uh, for touch and go Wyndham. Will we do a touch and go, or you want to do a full stop? Um, we we could do we could do a full stop just so you can get like the full thing. It's like okay, touch down, collapse to the floor, brakes, back pressure. Okay. In that order. Okay. Okay. A beam at touchdown point. Start a gradual descent. Not too much though. Keep a little high. With uh, precision landing approaches like this, yeah, it's okay to have kind of a longer final, just so you can get yourself zoned in. Okay. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, turning left base, runway 9, full stop, Wyndham. Okay. 80. Second notch. And I'm going to do the same uh, same landing spot. Okay. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, final runway 9, full stop, Wyndham. Okay, get my airspeed down, get the power out. Okay. 
Just to give you a little perspective, 200 feet, yep. which is your tolerance, is the beginning of one stripe to the beginning of the next stripe. Okay. That's 200 feet. Okay. If the airport markings are standard. Okay. <laughs> Okay, speed looks pretty good. You may float for longer than you think, although in 302, not necessarily. <laughs> All right, pretty good. Was I within tolerance? I think I, I was I, like I, just... I would say maybe like 210 feet. Okay. And taxi plan confirm. Same thing, we'll taxi back to the start of runway nine. Cool. So it's very easy to underestimate the distance that we're gonna float yeah. when we round out, right? So you, you probably saw me, I kind of rounded out and almost started flaring like at the very end yeah. of the number, mm -hmm. right? And then I kind of floated until, boom, touched down right at the beginning of the uh, right. Okay. So like, and it's weird because like, if you find yourself round rounding out and you're like, oh, I'm too, I'm too early, right? Yeah. You have more lift in the flare than you think. Okay. Right. You you can you really kind of kind of milk it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's actually even better for short fields. Yeah, right. When you bleed more energy. <laughs> yep, you land with uh, you land with even less speed. Okay, so which I mean, kind of think about landing a little earlier than yeah, you want yeah. to, and then and then milk that more right. than you would normally. Yep. Okay. Don't abuse that, obviously, but you know. Yep, that's a good way of thinking about it. Okay. Okay, before takeoff. Flap set, doors check, close, close. Magnetos both, great. Lights is required, fuel pump on. Transponder 1200, trim set. Radio set, take off brief. We'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, great. Uh, when we come around here, we're gonna be a short field touch and go, right? Okay. So it's gonna be touchdown, flap, so actually do flaps to the floor, and then you say simulated max braking and back pressure. Okay. And then I'm like, Okay, good job. Continue. And then you can take off again, and then we'll depart back to ground. So good. <coughs> uh, Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, holding short of 36, uh, taxiing via 36 for departure on runway 9. Wyndham. Yeah, I guess I don't need to say holding short, right? <laughs> right I right. just say what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. You can back taxi if you'd like. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary for this one. Okay. Yeah, same thing with uh, taking off on 3-3. Three, three. There's a displaced threshold there, and you can back taxi like, you know, 100 feet, but that's not necessary either. Yeah. Okay. Stop. No wind correction. Those flaps. Oh, yes. Okay, engine instrument screen, and here we go. Hey, okay, airspeed's coming alive. Looking for 55. 55, rotate. What the heck? Just maintain directional control with your rudders there. I've never had it pull right before. Yeah, maybe just some rogue gusts, I don't know. But yeah, when, when you feel that happen, especially when you're that low to the ground, when you're like, I know it's weird because you're like half off the ground and like you're half on the ground. Yeah. When you're on the ground at all, use rudders. Okay. To maintain directional control. Okay. Okay, climbing under 80. Out. I was wondering why I wasn't 
Picking up speed as much <laughs> as I thought it was going to. Yeah, yeah. That's better. Okay. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, turning left crosswind, runway 9, Windham. Okay, and same thing. Yep, short field landing. All right. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, turning left base, run nine, runway 9, Windham. I didn't hit my downwind call. Yeah, it's easy to forget little things when you're focused on the big things, right? Yeah. I kind of experienced that when I was demonstrating it. I was like, all right, I better have a great example and nail this. <laughs> yeah. And then I forget the base call and the turning off the runway call. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's why it's so important to like build up repetition and right. habits because like yep. you're, you can only think about so many things at one time, so you got to make it unconscious. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, final runway 9, touch and go, Windham. Okay, and I gotta get down significantly. That power on out. Feels better. Still not where I wanna be on speed, but altitude's looking good. 65, let's get that back up a little bit. Get back on center line. Yeah, I'm coming down too much. Okay, and I'm going second stripe again. Okay. Oh, too much, too much. Hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. Ah, early. Just a little bit though. Okay, simulated back pressure and... All right, nice job. Okay. Barely, barely, barely. early, right? Yeah. You may, if you had like, if like a few more feet in the flare, but I mean, you, you had pretty much used it all up. Yeah. All right, so now what's the plan? We'll just depart back to Groton here. Okay. Windham traffic, Cherokee 302, just departed runway 9, uh, turning southbound. Windham. Yeah, I mean, that gets the best across. Yeah. Crazy how different the wind is inland versus on the coast, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like sometimes that sometimes that difference can be great, like when it's like warmer or uh, when it's like you know they get a huge snowstorm everywhere in Connecticut, but for us it's just rain. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me get my off climbing an 80. Make sure rich. I'll, I'll double check it. Built the cool. habit. Make sure rich. Powerful 80 knots. Fuel pump off. Great. And we'll go 3,000 feet again. And... What do you think your on-course heading should be? 180. Roughly. Okay, yeah, r roughly, right? So, on I mean, our... I can, I can see, I think, the river and the bridge. To the left there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it right there. Yeah. If, if we fly 180, what's probably going to happen to our ground track? Um, so, let me double check where the winds were. Go like zero seven zero. So if it's coming from, so we want to fly a little bit west uh, to the left of one eight zero. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like when when we were flying up here, you were yeah. flying on, on a perfect course. If there was zero wind. Yeah. Right. Um. Jeez. 
Yeah, you were flying on a perfect course if there was zero wind. Um, and so flying back, it's like, okay, we we're flying this way, and we got pushed this way. Then the wind's probably come, coming from over here. Yeah. So I'll angle like this. Okay. Wyndham traffic, Cherokee 302, two miles south, departing to the south, final call, Wyndham. Chances are the winds aloft at just about 3,000 and near the surface are going to be like kind of similar. Yeah. Just be careful when you're using the winds like right on the surface and comparing them with 3,000 feet because if, if, if they're off by like even only like 45 degrees, it can have an, an impact on your ground track. Okay. When we're doing ground reference stuff, we're close enough to the ground to where we can use a nearby airport's winds. Okay. And it'll likely be about the same. Okay. But not necessarily for cruising super high. Okay. Cruise check, pitch for level flight, build speed to cruise, trim set power 2400, trim airplane, lean mixture above 3000, and swap tanks every 30 minutes. So I can oh, give it a swap. Nice uh, 70 knot ground speed. As opposed to, or what were we doing, like 110 coming we up We were here? doing 110 in the climb out. <laughs> Yeah, 20 knot headwind component. So let's see, here, punching Groton right now, direct Groton. Or okay, I, I'll just do it, I'll yeah, just sure. type it in. Oh, small, okay. All right, so Groton's about 20 miles away. Yep. Right? So if we have a ground speed of 70 knots, how long will it take us to get there? You can just estimate, like, okay. just like normal rule of thumb kind of calculations. Um, 70 knots, 20 miles away. Uh, like 20 minutes, roughly. Yeah, right. Yeah, pretty pretty like close, a, right? A third it's, of a of an hour. Yeah, is right. What is, I was going on. Is, is is it gonna be a little over 20 minutes or a little under 20 minutes? It's gonna be a little under 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. Right. I always think like if it was 60, it'd be 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yep. That's the rule of thumb that I always use too. It's like, okay, well, am I closer to one mile a minute or two miles a minute? Yeah. Right, because very often we're in between 120 knots and 60 knots. Okay. Right, so it's like, okay, well, maybe if I'm at 90, that's like a mile and a half a minute, right? right. It's, it's not exact, but it's, it's very close to a mile and a half a minute. Um, and so using that estimate, then it's like, Okay, you just kind of do some mental calculation, and then you can estimate your time, right? Yeah. And so if it's going to take us 20 minutes, how much fuel are we going to burn? We're going to burn a third of 10, so like about three. Yeah, right. Three gallons, yep. Yep. Good. Um, if you could mentally kind of do that, then you're going to be in really good shape for the diversion portion of the check ride. Okay. Okay, because that's going to be part of that. Okay, he's going to be like, oh, take take me to take me to Wyndham or take, take me to Chester. Then from your course, from your fake cross country plot line that you have, yep, um, you can kind of gauge how far you are. Right. He may fail the GPS. Right. He might not. He might let you use it, right? But you okay. never know. Yeah. Um, so if you have this, then wonderful, right? If, if you have ground speed, wonderful, right? Yeah. If you don't, you're just going to have to estimate ground speed, right? Okay. So it's like, that's why it's really important to be aware of where the wind's coming from and just kind of like think about things. Um, so using your ground speed and distance, you can be like, oh, well, it's going to take me this long. And then from there, you can be like, oh, it's going to... Be this much fuel. Yep.
So some instructors like to have their students use the E6B while they're flying. I mean, that's fine, right? If you know the E6B really well. Yeah. Um, and it's it's even more precise, of course, right? Yep. But if you can do it mentally, that is just fine. Okay. Okay, so... I would say be able to use the E6B in case your mind is like, you know, really task saturated. Yeah. But I'd highly suggest also being able to use like mental computation too, because it's really annoying just, oh, okay, well, great, got to reach back here, you know, fly the airplane at the same time, reach for it, okay, what side am I on, right, and, you know, do all that stuff. Okay. And you won't necessarily always have your E6B, you know, so. Yeah. You could also just go like that and then, <laughs> but. <laughs> We're good to be able to do it yeah. if you don't have GPS or something. I kind of want to learn how to use a VOR. Oh, oh yeah. Do you yeah. have to use that or is that like. Not, not on the check ride. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. How much more foggle time do you need? I need uh, all of it. Yeah, so I have point three, I think. Yeah, we'll we'll be uh, we'll be definitely doing some of that during the foggles. Um, during the foggle time, yep. Okay. Just so it's not a hundred percent of one thing. Um, in the next few lessons, what what I'll probably have planned for us is we'll track. Um, we'll just kind of do some like regular basic attitude instrument flying. Um, and then we'll track the Block Island VOR to Block Island. Okay. And then I'll have you take the foggles off, and then we'll do some like real life short field landings. Okay. At Block Island. Okay. Right. So it's like the runway's not wicked short. I mean, 2,500 feet is a short field, definitely. It's not. It's not unsafe. Yeah. But the stakes are a little higher than you know at Groton, right? Yeah. So it's like puts a little more of a real life feel on it. Okay. And plus, it's fun to go to Block Island. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get Adis. Okay. You should be able to hear it from here, but if you can't, then just throw it on the test. Okay. Altimeter 3003. There you go. ILS, RNAV, GPS, or visual approach in use. Landing into Or visual approach in use. Five. Caution for light bird activity, all quadrants of the airport. Advise on initial contact, you have Alpha. <laughs> alpha. Good morning, Groton Tower Information Alpha, 1256 Sulu weather, wind 100 at 16, gusting 25, visibility 10. Few clouds at 4,000, ceiling 5,000 overcast. Temperature 13, dew point 4, and altimeter 3003. ILS, RNF, GPS, or visual approach in use, landing and departing, runway 5. Caution for light bird activity, all quadrants of the airport. Advise on initial contact, you have Alpha. I like how this guy does it because he like makes alpha like very prominent. Good morning, Glenn, yeah. alpha. And so you're able to remember it, you know. One zero zero at one six gusting two five visibility one zero. One six two gusting two five. Ceiling five thousand overcast. Temperature one three two. All right, so runway five. One six gusting two five. So we're on five and it's coming from one six. It'll be a right crosswind. And we'll do a, just a normal landing. Okay, right? sure. Or, do you, or should I do something else? Yeah, yeah we, we can do a normal landing just because, yeah, the, the winds are <laughs> pretty strong. I mean, you, you could, yeah, let's do a normal landing and then try to hit a point, all right? So okay. on downwind, we'll, we'll pick a point or however, whatever pattern actually he gives us, probably going to be downwind. Okay. Good morning, I went to Mohegan the other day and I was like, man, it's it's weird. Like I see it in a whole different light now. It's like it's like a, a landmark to me now. Yeah, now. yeah. 5, yep. <laughs> I must be 10 miles north of Grind. Wow. wow. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty irrelevant to my situation right now, but. <laughs> right. All right, I was wondering if you were gonna remember to, to change that, so nice job. Thanks. Zero at one six, gusting two five, visibility one zero. Two clouds at 4,000, ceiling 5,000 overcast. Temperature one three, dew point four. 
Altimeter 3003. ILS Arnett. Groton Tower, Cherokee 55302, 10 miles north, inbound for landing with Alpha. Cherokee 55302, wind 11020. You can have a straight into 15 or you can land a runway 5, your choice. Wind is. We'll take 5. 55302, five, uh, enter right downwind, correction. Enter left downwind, runway 5, report midfield. Left downwind, runway 5, report midfield, Cherokee 302. Alright. 110 at 20, zero. so that's like a 60 degree crosswind. So we're going to feel almost all 20 of those knots okay. for the crosswind, right? So the max demonstrated crosswind component for this airplane yeah. is 15 knots, all right? Okay. So it doesn't mean it's impossible, but it means that we may run out of rudder and we may have to go around. You think I should call him back and switch it to 1.5? What do you think? Uh, I think it would be easier, but it might be good practice to get a nice heavy crosswind in. All right, also runway five is 50 feet wider. So yeah, that that's something to to consider too. Yeah. So uh, if if we do end up like drifting significantly, we have 50 more feet to work with. Okay. Yeah, I'll stick with five. I okay. Think, sure. I think it'll be. I like practicing the crosswinds. Okay. I mean, you you'll still definitely feel it on on one five too, but yeah, you'll you'll feel it much more on on runway five. Okay. And I shouldn't have started my unintentional descent without doing an intentional descent checklist. Descent check, mixture rich, feel fullest tank. I already switched it to fullest, lights on. So the, these gauges aren't perfect, but they're still good for like gauging which one's more full. Okay, so I can switch back to yeah. it. Did you switch it in route? Yeah. Or, okay, gotcha. I switched it when we departed Wyndham. Oh, okay, when we got gotcha, to gotcha. cruise. Yep. Altimeter 3003. All right. GPS. Left down for five. Yeah, so there's no real wrong answer with, like, that sort of choice that that tower gives us. It's all about what we're comfortable with, you know? Yeah. Um, if it's over our personal minimums, that's one thing, right? Then there is a wrong answer. But if it's like, if it's a matter of like, yeah, 40 degree crosswind, 60 degree crosswind, there's 50 feet over here, it depends on what you want, right? As the pilot in command. Okay. Maybe for some reason you're more comfortable dealing with, all right, wait. A uh, right two, crosswind. Two, two, two zero, zero, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right crosswind or left crosswind, yeah, something like that. And on final, you can feel free to ask them for a wind check, just so it's got that kind of like that last minute update. And then you can always be looking at the wind sock as you're coming in too. That's super helpful. Okay. Especially on runway five, because you can see it right in front of you. With the wind uh, at 20 knots, how many flaps do you think we should need or we, we should use? I think one. Okay, sure. Yeah, again, that's there's really no wrong answer to that. It's just about what you're comfortable with. Yeah. The recommendation is, right, as the wind gets stronger, you use less flaps, but... I kind of I kind of like the in, a, in heavier winds. It just feels like better to use less flaps and come yeah. in a little fast when you have like a nice long runway anyway. Yeah. I don't see too many negatives of doing that. All right. ILS RNAV GPS or visual approach and use landing and departing runway 5. <laughs> One hey. thing that, that is a little bit different is like the view that you'll have when you're like in the flare, you know what I mean? You'll you'll be you'll be at a higher angle of attack than than you're used to. Okay. Just because the flaps increase the angle of attack without increasing your pitch. Temperature is zero at one six gusting two five. Feels pretty good. Okay. Ceiling five thousand overcast. Temperature one three do <laughs> altimeter three zero zero three. <laughs> GPS or visual approach in use landing. Groton Tower, Cherokee 302, left downwind midfield, runway 5, request full stop. Cherokee 302, runway 5, clear to land, wind 100, 19, gusting 27. 
clear to land runway five, Cherokee 302. All right, cool. So one back to one zero zero. So maybe like a 50 degree crosswind. So we're still gonna, you know, feel significant. Wind here. I already do. Yep. Really? I'm, I'm not feeling that. I mean, it feels pretty smooth to me. <laughs> this went over a roller coaster. <laughs> Okay, it's a B must, which happens to be 45 degrees as well. Yep, make sure you use that left rudder. So yeah, with the gust factor here, wind's at 1.9, gusting 27, so you can add like 5 knots to your approach speed. Okay. Or 4 knots, but I mean 5 knots is just a rounder number. Departing, runway 5. Caution for light bird activity all quite into the airport. Advise on initial contact, you have out. There you go, minimize the distractions. Yep. Feels pretty good now. Yeah. At Wham, least, right? <laughs> yeah. At least Gus wise. Our ground speed right now heading right into the wind is 50 knots. Wow. 49. 48. Okay, glide slope feels pretty good. 75, I'm holding. Getting a little fast, a little high. Heck of a job. Thank you. Uh, should I just keep going? Uh, we, we can make Delta. Right here? Yep. Nice job. Thank you. And where's the windsock? Uh, yeah. Okay. But that one feels good. It did feel good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm screwing a lot of things up. Let's <laughs> get it. Like, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> all right. After landing, clear all runway stop. Flaps up. Lights is required. Fuel pump off. Taxi plan confirmed. We will taxi back to the ramp. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can put this on a tie down because this might actually not go out again today. Okay. But we don't have a plan yet, so... Like, request him to taxi? Yep. Uh, yeah, we, we can stay on tower because he hasn't switched us, so... Okay. Groton Tower, Cherokee 302, clear of runway 15, request taxi back to the coastal ramp. 55302, taxi coastal ramp. Taxi coastal ramp, Cher Cherokee 302. Yeah, really nice job. It's like, you know, th th those like, you know, ballooning and like the craziness back and forth. I mean, that's inevitable, right? That's going to happen with any pilot, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was an excellent touchdown. Nice open wheel landed first. So it'll... Thanks. Um, bring it around the other way. Sure.
feels good feel like feeling like building up a little bit more like just control of knowing yeah. when I do a certain thing with a certain amount of pressure like what's going to happen yep versus like test it out and see what happens <laughs> right right and then adjust accordingly okay Shut down secure radio system off cool yeah what do you think with your uh well you kind of already said it right just kind of like it's nice to know what control inputs you have to do rather than guess and check yeah um but yeah anything else that kind of like sticks out to you about that one um i feel like it was good to find out about the uh or like realize that you're gonna float and you can like milk a little bit mm. more out of the back pressure mm -hmm. um even for like a normal touchdown yeah i think yeah yeah knowing that you got a little bit extra in the bank if you want to just like settle it down nice and easy mm -hmm. or extend a little bit mm -hmm. um it was cool just doing the short field stuff for the first time yeah definitely yeah that's about it cool all right mags off cheese out yep